Hello everyone. Is immunity always useful? The answer is no. Over immunity can result in hypersensitivity reactions, and there are four main types of hypersensitivity reactions. Type 1 starts with entrance of an antigen into the body. This antigen may be food or inhalant that normally shouldn't do allergy. Let's assume that we have a person who has allergy to mango. What will happen if he eats mango? T helper 2 cells will be activated, secrete interleukin 4, that stimulate B lymphocytes to secrete immunoglobulin E. Immunoglobulin E becomes attached to basophils and that's it. The next time this person eats mango, the immunoglobulin E attached to basophils bind to the mango antigens, causing degranulation of basophils and the release of mediators within 20 minutes like histamine and the platelet activating factor. Basophils also start the synthesis of leukotrienes and prostaglandins that be secreted 6 hours later. And with the stimulation of basophils, eosinophils, and T helper 2 cells. What will happen? This person will suffer from anaphylaxis, hypotension, and the bronchospasm due to muscle contraction, and this severe form may be life threatening. An example is penicillin allergy. Another milder form of this hypersensitivity type is atopy, like asthma, urticaria conjunctivitis, rhinitis, or diarrhea that occur in response to different allergens. For diagnosis, a skin test is done to detect the type of allergen to be avoided later. Also, total and specific immunoglobulin E levels are usually high. Anaphylaxis should be treated immediately by adrenaline, cortisone, and oxygen. Atopy is managed mainly by avoiding allergens or by desensitization using a gradually increasing doses of the allergen. This sensitization helps to shift the immune response towards T helper 1 response. Antihistaminics, cortisone, and leukotrienes also can be used. Type 2 hypersensitivity occurs when a small molecule, non-immunogenic molecule, becomes attached to a cell so that antibodies can't identify this cell and consider it foreign and attack it, causing complement activation, opsonization, and antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. Examples of type 2 hypersensitivity include blood group ABO and RH incompatibility, autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, drug reactions, and graft rejection. Type 3 hypersensitivity reaction includes immune complexes that become precipitated on in, in the basement membrane of the small blood vessels. Anaphylatoxins C3A and the C5A becomes activated, stimulating basophils that secrete histamine and the neutroph and the neutrophils that secrete enzymes, destroying the basement membrane. Also, platelets accumulate, forming microthrombi occluding the blood vessel and is cause ischemia of tissues. Mostly this occurs in joints and kidney. Examples of type 3 hypersensitivity reactions include serum sickness precipitated by some drugs like penicillin, arthritis reaction caused in the part of the skin that is injected with insulin regularly, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis and autoimmunity. Treatment by antihistaminics, cortisone, immunosuppressives, and the plasma pheresis to clear immune complexes from the circulation. The last type is type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. The response here is T helper 1 response with secretion of pro inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1, interleukin 6, and the chemokines. The antigen is surrounded by monocytes, macrophages, T helper 1 cells, T cytotoxic cells, forming a granuloma with necrosis in the center. The commonest example is tuberculin test and the granuloma that occurs in response to tuberculosis or to schistosoma eggs. Thank you for watching us.